At this point, we've all seen how tragic uh, an infectious disease outbreak can be. As we saw during the pandemic, nothing that we could do could keep up with the pace of the infection spreading and then escaping. The people that protect us, our military, our police, our medical professionals, when they go into one of these regions or into an outbreak situation, we need to have something that can protect them and we need it fast. Antibodies are a really powerful therapeutic or prophylactic. They're something that's made naturally in the human body. You make them all the time. They're at high quantities. So antibodies are, are incredibly safe. It takes some time to do the natural uh, evolutionary processes that, that come up with, uh, with antibodies that properly bind. Vulnerable people in our populations who have compromised immune systems, their bodies either can't produce the correct antibodies or they take too long to produce the correct antibodies. So why, why antibodies? They're something that's made naturally in the human body, um, but we can also generate them as a, as a drug that can be given either to treat a disease or to prevent disease. The space of antibody designs is too large of a space to fully synthesize in the laboratory all possible antibodies to any particular antigen. We will be here forever. And so having a computational tool like GUIDE has the potential to save millions of lives. The GUIDE drug design platform has three main areas. The first is to co-design which means we design drug candidates using computational methods. Basically use the power of supercomputers combined with machine learning and simulations to accelerate and pinpoint those most promising areas of design space. Not only do we want the antibody to bind very strongly to its target, but we also want it to bind to many real or potentially emerging variants or strains of the virus, for example while still being safe to administer to a human and be robust enough to withstand the harsh processes in manufacturing at scale. We try lots of different alternatives in simulation. We aggregate them together, we choose some, and then they have to be tested because simulations always have some divergence from reality. They, they don't really tell you the full story and they might be wrong in important ways. So you wanna go validate your predictions. And so we create a collection of designs, a collection of antibodies that we wanna go test. And that testing is done in-house at the Rapid Response Laboratory. What we do here is take the computation design antibodies from the guide engine and turn that into actual practice. So we take these computational sequences, we convert it into DNA, and then make plasmids. This enables us to then put this into living cells, which are able to make the antibodies of interest for us. In order to meet uh, the throughput of the computation team, we have some robotics and automation that helps us meet the challenge. Robots, they do things, the most reproducible, boring tasks in the same exact way every single day, and they will do 96 or 300 at a time, when a human can only do really one at a time. Once the cells make enough antibody, we can purify the recombinant protein and then start testing it for a variety of metrics. And then we will run them and characterize them in our analytical instruments to make sure that the mutations that the computation team selected actually are either favorable or non-favorable to the binding. Does it actually neutralize the, the target that we want to neutralize? The last part, the third part, is to learn, which means we take the data from those drug design campaigns with lots of other data that we're generating to improve our models, enabling our platform to get better and better over time. All the prophylactic antibodies that are currently in clinical use, so protecting people that are immunocompromised that can't be vaccinated, they're off the table. They don't work anymore. Is there anything that we can do? So my son was born um, at the end of September, and so I was on maternity leave at home. But I had set up this cool new assay to really quickly screen lots of variants at once with high sensitivity. But at the time, I had just 
designed it and actually it wasn't quite finished yet, but we didn't have time to do the old fashioned process because that took more than a week with three people's effort, whereas the new automated process could take just me for about 12 hours. So I ended up coming in several days to develop the assay and then run it in real time. And I would, I would set up the, the automated gyros assay, go home, nurse my child, come back, take off that one, put the next one on, go back, put my child to bed, get him to sleep, come back, put on the next one. Um, and so I was basically working uh, nights so that I could get that stuff um, out the door. So we had this huge design task that we had never done before. And it was, in the end, it was successful. So early in the new year, we had a bunch of designs and they were therapeutically relevant. Um, and they started through the FDA approval process. You know, we take an antibody, we tweak it. That gives us six months of protection. That gives us a runway to develop the vaccines that are gonna protect you for the next 10 years. That will be able to counter emerging threats preemptively we're doing really cutting edge science with big major impact. It is a privilege to work on Guide. It is challenging. This is why I'm waking up and going to work. It's for a good reason. Being able to apply something that you love, such as uh, artificial intelligence, to a problem of national and international importance is very gratifying. I got into infectious diseases because I wanted to protect people, children who are not immune to anything or the elderly who have waning immunity but also everybody, right? Like no one deserves to be in the hospital because of an infectious disease. For more information, check out Science and Technology Review.